Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Um, in this lecture, we will talk about the structure of antibodies. And selection of this topic is because of whatever is happening around us in these days because of COVID-19 coronavirus. So I suggest all of you guys to stay inside your homes and stay safe. Let's discuss about topic structure of antibodies. In this whole topic we will learn about about the basic introduction of antibodies, their chemical nature, whatever are the types of antibodies and then briefly discuss about the structure of these antibodies and then function either direct or indirect functions. First of all, uh, about the antibodies, antibodies are chemically glycoproteins glycoproteins this thing you need to remember the bulk of these antibodies composed up of proteins but these proteins also have some attached carbohydrates so that's why they are not only protein but glycoproteins antibodies are actually the plasma proteins and they make about 20 percent of total plasma protein and um, they are also called as immunoglobulin because they belong to the class globulin and they are also called immunoglobulin why they called as immunoglobulin because of their role in our immune system uh, that's why they oftenly represented as ig ig stand for immunoglobulin so this is about the chemical nature of antibodies. Antibodies are chemically composed up of glycoproteins. Now, the types of antibodies. You know, later on, we will talk, discuss about the structure of antibodies and we will talk about the light and heavy chains of antibodies. Uh, generally, the small antibodies like IgG composed up of two heavy chains and two light chains. But this is not true in all the cases. Some of the antibodies have more number of light and heavy chains. Like IgM, this one is larger antibody. This one have uh, almost 10 heavy chains and 10 light chains. Why the IgG? IgG have two heavy chains and two light chains and these chains of proteins are called heavy and light chains because of their molecular weight light and heavy chains on the basis of type of heavy chains remember one thing on the basis of type of heavy chains the antibodies are classified into the five main classes on the basis of heavy chain uh, these are G A M E game game D spelling of game game D I G G I G A I G M I G E and then I G T recalling or revising that thing on what basis the antibodies are classified into these five classes on the basis of type of heavy chains. He so heavy chains in the antibodies are of a five type. Gamma, alpha, mu, epsilon and then delta. So these are the five different types of uh, different classes of antibodies on the basis of heavy chains. Some of antibodies they are found in abundance inside the body abundantly found like IgG found abundantly inside our body it it is about 75 to 80 percent of total antibodies found inside our body that is the IgG this is very important MCQs the most abundant antibody is IgG and then largest antibody with respect to its molecular weight is IgM and then the people those are suffering from either hypersensitivity or allergic 
reactivities are allergic people have abundant ige ige is abundantly found in the people those are suffering from any sort of allergy so these are some types of antibodies now we will discuss about the structure of antibody in detail so wait for that i will change the whole scenario i will draw some of the images of antibody and its heavy and light chains and then we'll explain all the things okay uh to continue the same scheme uh we were discussing about the uh, structure in our second section structure of antibody this structure for the first time explained by these two guys gerald m admin and rodney r porter in 1972 i will focus a zoom it later on if you cannot easily uh see these words okay this is a y shaped molecule and as i already told you guys antibodies are composed of a heavy and light chain some of antibodies like igm have 10 heavy chains and 10 light chains but uh, generally we are discussing about the igg so in this case this is one of the y shaped molecule and uh, this y shaped molecule there are two heavy chains just check here this is one of the heavy chain heavy because of higher molecular weight second heavy chain and these two are light chains each light chain of antibody is linked with heavy chain through single disulfide bridge this is very important point each light chain of antibody is linked with heavy chain through single disulfide bridge while two heavy chains are linked through two disulfide bridges these green lines are actually representing sulfur sulfur linkage or disulfide bridge so two disulfide bridges are between the two heavy chains and one disulfide bridge between heavy and light chain okay now antibody have two ends as well one of the end of antibody is called fab end look this red section this is called fab end fab stand for fragment antigen binding fab fragment antigen binding mean that this is the portion of antibody where antigen will bind you know antigens are the molecules those are found on the surfaces of foreign particles foreign pathogens like viruses like bacteria they are antigens and these antigens will bind over here uh, the part of antibody where antigen will bind that part is called as fab fragment antigen binding this fab is also called as paratope you are aware about the two terms similar term one term is called epitope and second term is called paratope epitope is a part of antigen while paratope is a part of antibody epitope and paratope they are complementary for each other like a jigsaw puzzle uh to further elaborate or to further explain the epitopes or uh, uh, paratopes just check this a fab end or paratope is further unroll unfold and and this whole portion there are certain sections where the antigen of any pathogen or foreign particle will bind and these portions are called cdrs usually there are three cdrs like cdr1 cdr2 and cdr3 what are these cdrs cdr complementarity determining regions mean these are the parts of uh, antibody those will determine the complementary portion of the antigen so like a jigsaw puzzle both the antigen and the antibody can attach with each other 
so that's the reason they call cdr complementarity determining regions these regions and the fab end of the antibody will determine the complementarity in the antigen so the antigen and antibody will actually link each other okay to the fab end of antibody this red section is represented by vh this is nothing like v for variable h for heavy chain and vl variable light chain variable portion of heavy chain and variable portion of light chain this thing is also mentioned in your book as well as this composed up of 110 to 130 amino acids and sequence of these amino acid get vary from antibody to antibody so that's why this section is called as variable section of antibody variable portion of heavy chain variable portion of light chain and this variable portion composed up of 110 to 130 amino acid mentioned in your book as well and rest of the portion is actually constant portion look at this the constant one portion of heavy chain the constant two portion of the heavy chain constant three portion of the heavy chain why the light chain have only one constant portion constant portion of light chain okay this whole is the heavy chain and these are two light chains zoom into the constant two portion of the heavy chain there are some molecules attached shown in red and these molecules are molecules of carbohydrates that's why i already mentioned you guys antibodies are glycoprotein they are not purely proteins glycomine carbohydrates bulk of this antibody composed up of proteins while some of the carbohydrates are also attached with these proteins so that's the reason why the antibodies are glycoproteins uh like this is a fab end this whole section is called fc end fc fragment crystallized because during the cold storage this portion of the antibody get crystallized this portion get crystallized so that's why this portion is called fc end so one of the end is called fab end and second is called as fc end this is a generalized structure of antibody two heavy chains and two light chains two heavy chains are linked through the two disulfide bridges while one of the light chain link with heavy chain through single disulfide bridge along with other binding forces already mentioned already told you guys that uh, these antibodies are actually classified into the five main groups on the basis of type of heavy chains so type of heavy chains there are five types of heavy chains gamma d gamma type alpha type mu type epsilon type and delta type about some property of heavy chains the molecular weight of heavy chains ranges from 50 to 70 kilo deltons 50 to 70 kilo deltons of molecular weight number of amino acid may found in these heavy chains like 440 amino acid in these heavy chains 440 amino acids and sequence of these amino acid determined by the gene those are found on the chromosome number 14 the sequence of amino acids and the heavy chains determined by the genes and these and these genes are found on the chromosome number 14 okay regarding are talking about the light chains of antibody these are light chains light chains uh they are so called light chain because of the lower molecular weight and molecular weight of the light chain ranges from 22 to 25 kilo deltons unlike the heavy chain where the 50 to 70 kilo deltons the light chains have molecular weight 22 to 25 kilo deltons and number of amino acid in light chains are 220 unlike the 440 in heavy chains one thing more there are two main types of light chains as well one type is called kappa chains and second chain is called lambda chains so one is kappa chains and second is lambda chains 
as these are the chains of amino acid and sequence of amino acid will be determined by gene as usual the gene those determine the sequence of amino acid in the kappa chains they are found on the chromosome number 20 on the chromosome number 2 while the gene those will determine the sequence of amino acid and lambda chain they are found in the chromosome number 22 chromosome number 22 lambda okay one thing more that you need to memorize that uh, in a single antibody only one type of this light chain will be found not like one kappa and one lambda either both will be kappa or both will be the lambda types and human antibodies 60 percent of light chains are kappa type while 40 percent of the light chains are lambda type so this is overview of the structure of antibodies next will be about the functions of antibodies antibodies they are chemical simply either they function directly or indirectly directly they may cause agglutination precipitation neutralization while indirectly the antibody play a very important role that they activate the uh, complement system which will be our next lecture that how what is that complement system and what about the role of complement uh, antibodies in activating the component of complement system uh, with the reference like specially uh, you know complement system the proteins of complement system can be activated by either classical pathway alternative pathway or MBL antibodies are playing very vital role in activation of comp component of complement system through classical pathway hopefully it makes some sense and hopefully it is helpful you, for you guys if there is any problem ambiguity we can discuss this is the stage of learning we can improve it see you next time love is okay to zoom in for you hopefully this is what we have discussed the structure of antibodies because of low light there's a problem but I need to make it for you zooming out yeah this is fine if you want to note anything you can it's clearly visible now see you inshallah next time goodbye